Hello and welcome to Those Forking Fangirls, where we talk all things nerdy book, TV, movie, pop culture, fandoms, and how they integrate into our adult lives. I'm Christine. And I'm Natasha. And today we are going to be talking astrology, reading our birth charts, digging into what those say and mean. And to help us do that, we have a special guest, one of our wonderful, amazing Polis Bananas patrons, Christy. Christy, can you tell us about yourself, who you are, favorite fandoms, and of course your relationship with astrology, because she knows all the things. (laughs) I know some of the things, most of the things. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. I'm Christy. Um, I'm a 34-year-old English teacher from Georgia. Um, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. Um, I also love romance and fantasy books, Sarah J. Mass, Emily Henry, um, all the typical millennial obsessions like Game of Thrones, Disney, Harry Potter, <laughs> um, musicals, all that kind of stuff. Um, my relationship with astrology is um, like many of us. I was raised religious, uh, but for me, it never really felt right. Um, But I kind of started exploring astrology more in like my college years. Um, And it just kind of, the more I connected with the spiritual aspects of things rather than like a strict religion, the more I felt like, oh, this idea that like the energy of the universe um, that's all around us, like in the, you know, in the stars and the planets and in our world around us, um, that we're all kind of interconnected, that kind of resonated with me more. Um, It's not really telling the future to me. It's kind of like, a guidebook for understanding how different elements of your birth and your life can kind of come together and paint a picture of who you are. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Cause I feel like I like believe in the universe too and the mm-hmm. interconnectedness of it. Yeah. That's a really cool way to look at it. So we're really excited to get into our main discussion because Natasha and I, I think we looked up our birth, ch- our birth charts once before we started the show, but we didn't really understand <laughs> everything <laughs> that was lot. in front of us. <laughs> It is a lot, it's so a lot. it's going to be fun to dig in. <laughs> but before that, of course, we have Snap Crackle Pop Culture News, and we have some big shit that we forgot to talk about last week that happened during Romance Con. Mm-hmm. This information dropped. Midnight Sun is the Twilight adaptation that's coming to Netflix in animated form. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so so excited because if you're gonna adapt midnight sun and you're gonna do it in animation it's gonna be fucking hilarious i hope it's funny (laughs) it's gonna be funny that's the point of animation to make it funny i feel like if it takes itself too seriously it's gonna be really weird so hopefully it will be funny and like (laughs) yeah it's not going to yeah it's impossible to take itself too seriously as an animated series for adults it just is and i saw everyone talking about like the scene where what he counts all the bugs in the meadow or the all the ants and (laughs) oh my god it's gonna be so funny i could just picture it i already see all the comedy like because that's how you make it funny and like know that it knows it's funny you know trinity says i feel like i need to see what the animation style will be to know what to think i also agree i'm I'm picturing like the animation style we see with the harley tv show do you guys have you seen that on hbo max yeah i don't love that i well (laughs) here's what the animation looks like honestly (laughs) what if it was the animation style of the creators of like futurama and the simpsons and disenchantment (laughs) Yeah, no. That would be hilarious. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Honestly, as long as it's moving and it's not like anime where their mouths aren't moving, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Um, also, the scene where he decides to, uh, he's trying to figure out if he has to murder everyone in the room to also drink her blood. <laughs> Literally, like the scene where he's thinking of all like the reasons why he has to stand there and watch her sleep. He's like, who knows what could happen if I wasn't here? A meteor could come down from the sky and land on her house. So I have to be here to catch it just in case. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's insane. <laughs> I, I I have full trust with Netflix. I'm just like not a big adult animation person. So No, but it's Midnight Sun and Stephanie Meyer is funny. I know. This is the thing. Like because the movies took themselves so seriously, you forget that the books are funny and Stephanie Meyer is funny when she talks and the the show as an animation could have so much character cuz you can do so much creative shit with animation and have it go 
wild because you can edit it weird mm-hmm. they the characters can be over the top it can they can do so much stuff mm-hmm. that you can't do and still like take it seriously as a like anything if it's in film you know what i'm saying it's really it's much harder to work with film mm-hmm. in terms of like being over dramatic and <laughs> so yeah i'm i'm excited acro says she she says they do a good job with animation like blue eye samurai and that was beautiful animation i don't know if anyone saw it very artful i'm um i, I like i don't want the very beauty mindful. of the here's the thing i don't want the beauty of the animation to outshine the story i don't think it's going to be beautiful oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i think they need to try <laughs> um i uh, Maybe I'm just not like artsy in that way. Uh, I don't. I'm not like a big appreciator of animation. I'm more appreciative of like the dialogue, so and the tone and stuff. Well, I think if it's gonna be animated, it should at least it should have a beautiful art style, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they adapt the Midnight Sun in that way and seeing like what they do and what the characters look like because like for so long it's just Rob and Kristen like I don't even remember I don't even think I had original characters in my mind but I think it's gonna it's going to be I think a shock to the system at least for me when I watch it I already kind of see them in cartoons sometimes uh because I mean, specifically for Midnight Sun. I don't know why it works so much better. I don't know if I would want Twilight as a cartoon. But Midnight Sun, because Rob is so... No, Rob. Edward is so ridiculous. I just think it works so well. And I understand why Stephanie Meyer was pushing for it. Because you can lean into the comedy and the ridiculousness in such a more, like intense way without making people think that you think you're serious. Mm. Yeah. There's this self awareness <laughs> animation that you it's harder to get with film. Yeah. Elise also brings up Arcane, which is a Netflix. That's the one I was just trying to think of. And I really like that that animation style. So I don't know. I think it's gonna be different than what we all expect it to be. So I'm i I'm excited, but also like I'm trying to brace myself. <laughs> I'm just excited now. <laughs> Once they said Midnight Sun, I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> so in other news, more cast has been announced for Netflix's adaptation of Emily Henry's People We Meet on Vacation. So exciting. So we already knew that Emily Bader <laughs> yeah. f- f- it was playing the lead and Tom Blith was playing Alex, her love Blythe. interest. It's but Blythe. Oh, Blythe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But Alfie from Emily in Paris has also been casted. Uh, Jamila Jamil from The Good Place has been casted. I love Sarah her. Sarah Catherine Hook has been casted. I'm not sure who that is. but And then Lucas Gage, oh. who I've most recently seen in You, has also been casted. Wow. So they've got a great cast lined up for people who meet on vacation. If I was Emily Henry, I'd be so fucking pumped. I mean, as is, I'm so fucking mm-hmm. pumped. Yeah, this cast was is awesome i love jamila jamil like i'm i'm so yes. excited <laughs> yes i i'm i'm thinking jamila jamil might play her like really sophisticated influencer yeah. friend oh yeah. That yeah. Would be funny. that's what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> yeah she gives well that's what she gives in the good place she's like a really sophisticated like socialite almost mm-hmm. it's a good typecast for her <laughs> yeah. yes yes um, but I'm assuming that maybe Sarah Catherine Hook and Lucas Gage are that other couple, but I don't know. Mm. I guess Alex also has brother that's getting married, so I don't know. I need anyway. to read this book because they all just jumble together for me. <clears throat> I read it multiple times, so <laughs> I, feel, I feel very familiar with it. Okay, Natasha, give us the news. Okay, so Anna Todd production company frayed pages has purchased colleen hoover's adaptation of regretting you and they already have a cast <laughs> oh shit they, with allison williams who was in get out and girls oh shit the the brown-haired girl yeah and yeah. then mckenna grace oh my god i love her music dave She's from Fra- sheldon young sheldon dave franco what yeah and then I think he's new. His name is Mason Thames. 
And so I think they're so McKenna Grace and Mason Thames are playing the younger versions of Dave Franco and Allison Williams. Wait, no, there's no younger versions. No they're, younger? they're kids. They're oh. kids. Yeah. Oh. So Regretting You is the one with the mother and her child, and um, they it ends up that her sister is cheating with her husband. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. and the young the child is dealing with that and has a love interest, and she is dealing with. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, don't spoil it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, Anna Todd and Colleen Hoover. That's, I'm excited for them. I'm very excited for them. And they've got a great cast lined up. So, yeah, that's, that's super exciting. Anna Todd has been like really like being a, a really like a business lady, like starting her own publishing company, mm-hmm. starting her own production company, working with Colleen, who's also started her own production company. Like this is so cool. So that was, that was like the, the, the two big news thingies that dropped while we were at romance con, yeah. uh, the midnight sun thing. And then, um, Colleen Hoover and Anna Todd. Um, I do have an announcement that I've never talked about <laughs> publicly, but I am, um, I'm an author and I write under the pseudonym Christine Riccio. And a lot of new knowing is pulling bananas. But my name's Christine. And I actually have three books out. And my latest book came out in May. And yesterday, it was officially out for four months, which is crazy. <laughs> four months. Um, it's That's called crazy. Attached at the Hip. And it is a rom-com that's Survivor-esque. It has like reality show vibes. So when you read it, it's kind of like you're binging a really fun reality show. Um, It's Survivor with a dating twist. Elise says, let me just say, every person I've recommended it to has come back and loved it. Oh, thank you, Elise. I am so appreciative of you recommending it to people. I love, I'm just so excited when, and whenever you share that with me. (laughs) Um, So anyway, yeah, Attached to the Hip is out and it follows a 23 year old. She ends up going on this on Survivor, but she thinks she's going on Survivor and she gets there and they're like, no, this is a a spinoff show with a romantic twist where you're attached to someone every three days. And the person she ends up being attached to is her high school crush. She hasn't talked to in four years. So it's a fun time. It's out. The link is in the show notes. Um, And if you've read it and enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to review it. We're wherever you got it from. So like Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Audible or any of those places. It's super, super helpful for me as an author person if you review it because those places push books that have more reviews. And that's how the algorithm sends it to new readers. So thank you so much if you've already done that. If you haven't, I'd really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, my other two books, Again, My Better and Better Together, are both free on Kindle Unlimited right now. So really easy to read those if you have Kindle Unlimited um, and devour them basically for free, which is like, I just love when things are on Kindle Unlimited. It feels so accessible. <laughs> yeah. And Attached to the Hip yeah. is seriously so good, guys. It inspired me to start rewatching Survivor and I did a Survivor themed activity in my classroom. <laughs> Awesome. Wait, can you share the activity? What kind? Yeah, That's so, so fun. So I was doing an adverb review with my students. And um, so first I had them take the definition of an adverb. It was all scrambled up and they had to put it together to spell the definition. Then oh, nice. after they got the definition, nice. they had to check in with me and I gave them a list of sentences that had adverbs in it. They had to figure out which words were the adverbs. And then I had a giant word find on the wall where they had to go <laughs> and find the adverbs. I love this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a cool teacher. <laughs> One last bit of news we have before what right now. Uh, Avatar, the, the Avatar is coming back soon, apparently, because there was a teaser. And Toph has been casted. Her name is Mia check i think it's check yeah <laughs> okay her name is mia check she's been cast as top and there is a teaser where it's just like really close up on the ground and you see her foot and she like hits the ground and the ground starts to crack oh it's so cool i got so excited <laughs> so and it just said season two coming soon so <sighs> and there was a little clip of her and um I'm forgetting literally everyone's name, but like the the two leads, um, the other two leads, and they already look so much older because <laughs> they're 
and children and they're getting they're growing so fast no, it's probably been a while since they filmed the first season, so. Yeah, so I bet they're trying to film faster because you're going to be seeing them age quickly. We're on a timeline um, here. <laughs> we are. We are. When you're filming with your kids, you got to keep up. <laughs> um, all right. Moving on into what right now. Natasha, what have you been reading this week? Oh, <laughs> so I finished that fan fiction I talked about last week called Secrets called? and Masks by Emerald okay. Slytherin. And it's a Germany fanfic. Um, it's 74 chapters long. No, it's 72 chapters long with two epilogues. And I'm going to spoil it right now, okay? Cause, um, so <laughs> Skip ahead if you don't want to be spoiled for Secrets and Masks. We will fanfic. note the timestamps down below if you don't want to be spoiled. All right. All right. <laughs> know if we'll remember to do that so just skip ahead a minute <laughs> so i this fic is so freaking long guys and it is uh it's 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 one that everyone recommends to read after manacled and manacled is like this beautiful work of like a handsmaid's tale for germany it's not for everyone it's very dark and but it is like soul crushing but also like oh my god it's so good um so then I'm like oh yeah read secrets and masks now i do like the characterization of like draco and hermione in this and we have a lot of like really great side characters that the author like develops like she really develops um like Astoria and Daphne Greengrass and Theodore Knott and Blase, Blase, Blaze. Sorry. I, I, Blase. Oh, I always say it's Blase in my mind when I read it because it, it's Blase. phonetically Blase. My best friend Blase. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So the whole book is like Draco basically turns like Hermione into a weapon for the Death Eaters. And then it turns out that Theodore Knott was a turncoat for the Order and was like giving all this information in. And she and Theodore, she had no idea. Um, they were the ones who were like canoodling and um, helping like the Order. And then, okay, so cool. Now we're going to turn Draco and Blaze and everyone to that side of the order and like Draco and Hermione then start like their relationship and this, and then they have to go um, find a Horcrux to prove their worth to the order. And uh, Draco has a dragon who's named Narcissa and she doesn't like anyone, but she likes Hermione, of course. Canoodling, telling, okay, sorry. Canoodling is not kissing. They were just like in cahoots together. Sorry. Oh yeah. What do you mean? Canoodling? I thought you meant canoodling. No. (laughs) Canoodle, it's cahoots, cahoots, not canoodling. They're very similar <laughs> words, okay? Canoodling is like cuddles, snuggling. <laughs> so, this is an audiobook that I've been listening to on Spotify. So, that's why I was pretty easily accessible while I was sewing for like 50 hours this week. I get to the very end. Okay, also, big thing to remember Hermione's life is, is linked to Draco's life, okay? Um, because the Dark Lord did that. So, at the very it's end. It's giving fourth wing. Yeah. At the very end, we find out that Hermione has accidentally become one of Voldemort's new Horcruxes. And they have like this last battle where they're trying to figure out how not to kill Hermione because the author has changed the whole details of of how even Harry uh, survived becoming a Horcrux. And at the very end, um, she dies and then Draco kills Voldemort and he dies. And I'm like, okay, well, they're going to come back, right? No, no, they're just dead. And the I'm just sobbing, okay? Because even before they die, his fucking dragon dies trying to protect Hermione. I'm just like, oh, I can't take. It's like three a.m. I'm sewing. It's terrible. I'm like, I don't want to go through this. It's my second day, my period. This is bad. And I'm driving up to my friend's baby shower, listening to like this epilogue, and the epilogue is like the first part of the epilogue is about everyone who was left behind and all of their stories. And then the second epilogue is Draco and Hermione and like everyone who else has died, who was in this blissful, like after, 
afterlife. So it's like, what's even the fucking point? Why didn't everyone just die? Because everyone on Earth is just grieving them. And they're up there, you know, even after all the people that they fucking killed, having a grandiose time. Trinity's like, so it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, too. It does sound like it. Yeah. So, um... I, I turned it off. <laughs> so In conclusion, don't read that fanfic <laughs> if you don't want to be destroyed. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Christy, what have you been reading? <laughs> um, so I just finished reading The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Madonna, I think is her name. Um, and this book was actually gifted to me by my bestie, Cheyenne. Shout out to Cheyenne because she's in the chat right now. <laughs> um, nice. Um, but yeah, it's basically about this girl who is a witch. And it's kind of set in our world. But in our world, when witches have children, they die soon after. Um, so all of the witches are orphaned. Um, oh. And so our main character, she um, doesn't have parents. And she's kind of lived alone her whole life. Um, and she ends up going to tutor these three girls um, who are also obviously orphans um, and like they have a found family kind of vibe and she's like teaching them magic um, and it's just so it was so heartwarming um, it's one of my favorite books I've read this year it was just the most beautiful wow. like found family with like a little bit of romance but the romance isn't the main focus and just a lot about like you know just the community and bonds that we formed like together. girlhood yeah. yeah like girlhood and it was so good I loved it so much <laughs> Oh, I love that. I'm going to look that up. Okay, cool. I have been listening to Breathmans and Battle Scars, and then I stopped because what's happening now is that I get to a romantic scene in my novel, and all I can think is like all this dark, <laughs> like gritty sex shit that I've been reading <laughs> in Breathmans and Battle Scars. And I'll be like, wait, no, this tone is completely off. <laughs> Like, this isn't nice and romantic. This is dark. <laughs> Kate. Ooh, yeah. Go dark, Christine. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got to switch gears here. It is so a dark romance. So I started listening to Abby Jimenez is a part of your world again, which I fucking love that book. Highly recommend if you haven't read it. It's on um, the Spotify audiobook. So if you have Spotify premium, you can listen to it. And I'm having a great time re listening to that. It's getting me back in a more like romance, fun headspace. And I'm, I started reading Yours Truly, another of uh, Abby Jimenez books with my eyes. So when I'm in the shower, I'm reading a different book that I'm listening to when I'm outside of the shower. <laughs> It's weird, but they're both Abby and I love her writing style and it helps me like center myself in like a rom-com headspace. But I just bought Julie Soto's Not Another, Not Another Love Song in physical copy. So maybe I'll start reading that because I want to like vary the writing styles I'm reading in the romance realm because now I'm just like solidly reading all Abby Jimenez. Um, so I've heard really great things about this book and Julie Murphy just recommended it in our live show. So I'm pumped. Elise says, Oh my God, if you enjoy not another love song, please check out her fan fix. Oh yeah. Natasha was telling me that it started as very low. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm excited. And I, so I went to Barnes and Noble yesterday to buy a book for Heather's incoming child. And <laughs> I left there with four children's books, one being holes, which her child could not read. But one day. Right now. <laughs> Later one day. on. No. <laughs> one day. Um, so I, and I decided like I can give two to her child and then two to my neighbor's child because he's about to turn one. And, um, then I also got two books for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of them was not another love story. And one of them was, oh my God, I can't remember what it was called. The Lost Story by the same author who made the song, the, the wishes book that I read earlier, this book earlier this year i can't think of anything oh. because i'm anxious today <laughs> um what was that book that i read with the wishes um i don't know do you remember oh, God was, it, was it. it wishes like on the cover or was it a, no. the story cons the lost story by meg schaefer i could read it from here it's on my kitchen table oh my god <laughs> anyway i loved her other book i talked about it at the beginning of the year and 
Um, I'm excited to read this one and I'm glad I have it in Fitz's little copy. But anyway, I Wishes. went into that store. I was like, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to grab a book I read when I was little and I'm going to get out. The Wishing Game. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I was like, I'm going to just grab one and get out of here. I was in there for 40 minutes. Okay. And as I'm finally starting to leave, holding my six books, I left with a hundred dollars worth of books. <laughs> oh of course, God. nobody's surprised. Okay. <laughs> but on my way out, this like woman in her fifties, I is like, can I ask you something? And she has like a rickety voice. <laughs> And I'm like, sure. And she's like, where'd you get those kick-ass boots? And I'm like, oh, DSW, like two years ago. And then she's like, what books do you have there? Who are those for? And I was like, oh, my friend's having a kid. And she was like, can I tell you about some of my favorite children's books? Oh, no. And I'm like, oh. Oh my God, I am in here with my dog. We've been in here for 30 minutes. I need to get out. And I'm like, um, well, I picked some of my favorites. And they were like Eric Carl books because I loved the illustrations as a child. And I read them to my siblings after for years. So I got those. And she was like, you know, there's been a lot of books since Eric Carl. And I'm like, well, I wanted to have some that were nostalgic to like my childhood. So they felt like personal when I wrote a note in it. And she was like, oh, well, how would you know? You're like 12. And I was like, <laughs> literally, who asked? I was like, um, I'm 34. <laughs> She was just like, oh, well, you know why I said that, right? Because you look really young. And I was like, okay, I don't look 12. <laughs> um, but, and then I start walking away and she's like, well, when I was younger, when I was 25 at the mall, I had gray hair. And she just goes <laughs> telling me this story about how people thought she was an old lady when she was 25. And I'm just backing away the entire time. She follows me all the way to the register. <laughs> oh my God. Guys. That is insane. Barnes and Noble. I've never seen it so packed in my entire life. I couldn't go to one aisle by myself, which is great. People love reading now. But I was like, this is not the calm place it usually <laughs> is. And I was telling Christine last night, well, one heard that's a crazy story. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's nice to know that people still think it's like, you know, that people will come up to you and talk to you, even though you don't want to. Um, but it's crazy. Like my Barnes & Noble, at least the one that was redone is wild like it would it's packed on the weekends and you know this always makes me think when somebody starts talking to me in the aisle it makes me think of myself when i would be like do you need help <laughs> wait can i recommend you a book okay what, guys Natasha? i do that now when i go to joanne's <laughs> <laughs> i do it all the time i see people who look confused and i'm like do you need help with anything like, <laughs> do you work here <laughs> i'm at that store all the time and like and i now have like the sewing knowledge so i, I i've helped several people by the way it gives me great um uh i'm very proud of this <laughs> yeah well th that was me in my barnes and noble aisle yeah. i'd be like do you need a recommendation and they'd be like do you work here i'd be like no but i read a lot of books <laughs> <laughs> let me show you my book sticker i never did that oh <laughs> But Elise was like, I was at Joanne's this weekend and literally had a moment where I was like, I need a Natasha. Just Aww. DM me if you have a question. If you have a question and you're at Joanne's, just DM me. I'll be a civil assistant. <laughs> if you have a question. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move on to TV. Uh, Survivor season 47 started. I have to get back on my... This is the thing. Now that I'm writing and I'm I'm giving into the writing completely. I'm not like posting every day, but I need to get back to like posting about my book every Wednesday now that Survivor is back. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. 
um season seven of the circle the last few episodes are dropping i think this coming wednesday it's so good i had the best time watching it <laughs> i started and was like oh fuck there's some people from long island and they're my fucking favorite and i'm having so much fun watching them play the game <laughs> and then new jersey comes out the long island <laughs> The Long Island. I'm but I still feel it. like they're my people because they're close enough. <laughs> Agatha All Along I also watched and really enjoyed. And I am really excited for the next episode. I want to listen to the wind down, 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 <laughs> down. I'm sure it's on iTunes. I mean, down. Spotify. <laughs> I, okay. Well, um, Christy, have you watched Agatha All Along yet? Not yet. I need to, but I have not quite gotten to it. <laughs> I really want to hear like your thoughts. I've heard a lot of people say like it, they do a really good job representing like witches. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've and I've heard that from other people. So I'm excited. I love witches. I always forget how much I'm obsessed with witches till I start watching witches again. I'm like, oh, fucking love witches. <laughs> it's definitely on my list. I need so to watch fun. it, and then in the future, when you guys are talking about it, I'll add my thoughts to the chat. <laughs> Yes, like please. the first time you see Aubrey Plaza as a witch, you're like, "Fuck!" Like this is her role. <laughs> she looks hot, and also she like does. Was there like something in between, like with them? Did you feel something? Oh, there definitely was. There's yeah. backstory. They yeah. were lovers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm excited for that to drop. Um. Okay. So. Both Christy and I watched The Golden Bachelorette. Oh, yeah. What'd you guys think? Okay. Do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. Um, I didn't really watch The Golden Bachelor. Like, I watched a few episodes, but, like, I didn't really get hooked. And But I did see... He gave me the ick. Yeah, he gave me the ick, too. <laughs> honestly, it felt very, like, fake nice guy, like, the vibe I was getting from him. Mm-hmm. But I did really like Joan, and I did get through yes. the part in The Golden Bachelor where, like, she left to be with her um, daughter. So when I saw that she mm-hmm. was the Golden Bachelorette, I was, like, I was like crocheting my top for the Sabrina Carpenter concert. I was like, I need something to watch. Like, let me just watch the Golden Bachelorette. And I personally really liked it. I love her energy. She just seems very, mm-hmm. like, chill and self-aware and so, like, open-hearted. And um, she has an interesting selection of guys to choose from. <laughs> yeah, she does. The French accent guy was it's... an interesting starter. <laughs> very interesting (laughs) starter um so i was telling christine as i was watching that it was devastating well it's just it's because they're in and they're in a different stage of life than like you know the 20 year olds that like it's very sad because you go through everyone's backstory and the reason why they're there are only a few reasons they're they're either divorced they've lost their partner or they've never had a partner and it's everyone's story is sad and like Joan's story is sad her husband died they had a beautiful marriage for I think 29 years and it's everyone is devastating so it's just like getting through that first episode is like a roller coaster I was just crying through so much of it because it's just Mm. yeah (laughs) everyone's like that sounds depressing like it is at first but like they're all there to find love and yeah. like have well, you an know open what it's heart. Giving? It's giving divorce, beheaded, died, divorce, beheaded, survive. <laughs> and it's like they're taking that narrative and they're spinning it on its head and they're going to be like, fuck yeah, we're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it just, um, just just a reminder that it, the at least the first episode is sad, but it's it's going to it's gonna be able to get better Shantae I had to disassociate from those parts I did too I was just like I'm not really listening to this I can't cry anymore (laughs) (sighs) um really pulls at the heartstrings though I'm sure and it gets like you invested in a way that you're not invested Mm -hmm. in the regular bachelor yeah it's a lot more chill it's not quite as much like drama and like crazy behavior like I'm sure a few people do some stuff that's less mature but it just isn't the same level <laughs> I think. The, Five. the yeah. stakes are pretty high too because they've got a whole lot of family that they have to blend yeah yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. grandchildren <laughs> Natasha how is the perfect couple okay so I binge watched the perfect couple in one night I was sewing and I just had it on the whole time and it is like a murder mystery Nancy Myers film 
Um, oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It's, okay, so I should watch it. Yes. It's very... I, I felt, no spoilers. Okay. I felt it was very similar to... Like, a, a very similar to Nancy Myers film, but also to the HBO show... Um, Big Little Eyes? No. The Hotel One. The Lotus? The White the Lotus. Lotus. Well, oh, interesting. And, yeah, and what's her face is in it from the second season, um, from the bull type. Uh oh, Megan Fahey. Yeah. So wow, the fact that her name just came to me wild. <laughs> Nicole Kidman's in it. She is just beautiful and fantastic, and um, uh, Dakota Fanning's in it as well. Oh my God! Wait, why haven't I watched this yet? I love yeah. her. <laughs> Um, anyways, I'll, those are the vibes. Uh, there's a wedding and someone dies and you got to kind of have to figure out, uh, who killed this person. This so. is the vibe I want for my next rom-com. Somebody died, but like, we also fall in love. <laughs> the perfect blend. It's, uh, it's not really a romance, but yeah. But like when I write mine, it'll be a romance. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, that's three books from now though. <laughs> For anyone who's listening, getting confused, I'm not writing that right now. I have two other books in the works. Um, anyway, okay, what the hell's Camp Creatius? The last thing that Christy watched. Wait, is this on a uh, Netflix yeah, or, or Disney? Um, it's the yeah, Jurassic it's on Park animated show. Um, yes, I've heard oh. about this. So I'm rewatching everything Jurassic Park with my boyfriend right now because I found out he had never seen the original movies. He'd only seen <gasps> the first Jurassic World movie, and I was like, "This is unacceptable." Oh my. <laughs> God. <laughs> so we're rewatching everything in order. So we've done the first three movies. We did the first Jurassic World movie, and now we're watching the first three seasons of Camp Cretaceous before we do the second Jurassic World movie. And then we'll finish Camp Cretaceous, do the third Jurassic World movie, and then watch Chaos Theory. So Camp Cretaceous is about these kids nice. who are supposed to be doing a camp on um Island Nublar at the same time that the events of Jurassic World, the first movie, are happening, and they get left behind on the island after everyone evacuates. <laughs> and it's so good. Like, it's animated, it's a kid's show, but it has some really adult themes. And I feel like the character arcs from season one to season five are just so well done and they're really believable. And wow. I just love it. It's it's so good. <laughs> I didn't even know this existed. It's amazing. I got a whole elevator pitch at D23 and I Dude, forgot about it. if I had a it. kid, I would be like, we're watching this tonight. <laughs> um, is chaos, how does the chaos theory work into um, it? Um, chaos theory takes place six years after the events of Camp Cretaceous. And I think it's either concurrent with or right after the third Jurassic World movie. Yeah, that sounds right. And is that another like kid show or is it? Um, so it's like, it's still animated, but they're not like young kids anymore. They're like late teens, early twenties, I think. I, I can't remember their ages, but so it's a little older, but it's still animated. Um, and yeah, I watched it through once really fast. And I don't remember all the main storylines, so I'll have to pay closer attention my second time through. But um, yeah, so it's a little older, a little more mature. The violence is a little bit more intense in Chaos Theory than in Camp Cretaceous. Um, all of the dino deaths and like people getting eaten is like off screen in Camp Cretaceous. Um, but in Chaos Theory, it's like, here you go. <laughs> so oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, nice. Wow, I didn't know that existed. I'm going to do a deep dive. Also, did you know that the new Jurassic World with Jonathan, Jonathan Bailey and Scarlett Johansson is going to be rated R? I'm Ooh. so excited for this. Yeah. I mean, it's giving a return to the OG vibe, yes. and I'm pumped. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Those glasses on Jonathan Bailey work so well. He looks so good in so all good. the He looks pictures. like a hot Harry Potter. He <laughs> He just looks hot. I mean, for to me, he looks a lot better than he does in Bridgerton. <laughs> what? No, I love. No. Okay, yeah, the glasses are really doing it for Same. me. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's gonna wrap up what right now. We are about to move into our main discussion, but before we do, we're gonna take a second to thank all of y'all listening out there. Just thank you all so much uh, for taking the time to listen to us. Uh, per week we release episodes every week and it really helps if you guys also 
share word of mouth. Um, if you want to be more involved with the show, we do have a Patreon. Uh, we thank all of our Patreon members. Uh, you guys are the best. We are fully funded by Patreon. So thank you to everyone there. There's multiple different tiers there. We have Team Jacob, Team Edward, and Team Pulse Bananas. As you all know, Team Pulse Bananas, you get to be on the show. And we also have a monthly hangout session there and bonus episodes if you're Team Edward and up. But also the most important important one is tea time fangirl tea time so if you are team jacob which is our five dollar tier you get fangirl tea time which is our extra bonus bonus ep live what i don't know our extra bonus show at the end of each episode it's about 30 minutes or more and we kind of go into uh, more personal details in that. Um, so if you want to become a patron you can check out the link in the show notes if not like rating us giving us a review also helps um just thank you so much to everyone who listens and you can also follow us on instagram and tiktok where we are those working fangirls and for free. for free and make sure you follow the show on your favorite podcast listening app which is also free so if you are a patron we're about to jump right into the main discussion if you are not a patron we will be right back after these messages and we're back Hello, back. we're back. We're talking astrology. Astrology be, can be like a kind of polarizing subject in our landscape, especially I feel like in men today, like they will be so snooty about the mention of astrology. Because, and I feel like a lot of that's because it brings women joy. And there's all this like hatred toward feminine things in our patriarchal society what else is new but I find that like if you lean in it's just so much it's such a fun way to spur on bouts of self-reflection and self-awareness and understanding and it's become like really popular in the past I would say like four years to stay super in tune with astrology and I was wondering if y'all have a theory as to why it's really come into its own again. I feel like it goes through phases where astrology gets really big because there's other things like ITNJ that was like, whatever that is. I don't know what that one was called, but like that was kind of Myers big Briggs. back in like, yeah, Myers-Briggs <laughs> was kind of big and like, I feel like 2009, 2010, like what's your Myers-Briggs to like early internet times. And then Enneagrams were super big, like 2016, 2017, 2018, all those years. And I had a lot of fun. That's my favorite one because I feel really seen by my Enneagram. Mm -hmm. um, but now like astrology has been like solidly around for a long time. It just goes through waves where it gets really big. And do you guys have any theories on that? I think everyone is always trying to find a place in this world and their purpose. Yes. Maybe they're made for something like a higher power and obviously like the universe and how stars align. Can you can find purpose in that? I mean, I grew up Christian. So I was told to like, don't buy into astrology, even though like I was looking at it like in my 17 magazine all the time and seeing what my um, horoscope was. Um, but it's also funny to, because the Enneagram is very popular in Christian culture. So it's just like people really just try to find like why they are a, way a certain to understand thing. themselves and how. Yeah. 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 And like why they're similar to other people or, and it, I mean, it, it all, it all kind of works and goes into each other. Like, and we just want to figure out what the similarities are and the self discovery as Kate says. And yeah, yeah. I think, Christy, what do you think? Yeah. I think people just like to feel understood. And I think any type of like sorting system really draws people in because yeah. it gives them like a group to identify with. So that's why like, all the YA books that did this, Harry yeah. Potter, Divergent, Hunger Games, The Darkest Minds, like everyone, exactly. some more successfully than others, but um, even adult books, Akatar with the courts, you know, Fourth Wing with like the different dragon colors and like the parts of the um, military or whatever. Um, yeah, I feel like yeah. we just kind of long to be understood and have a community of people that understand us and we can be proud of that identity. Um, and I feel like astrology mm -hmm. kind of does that because it's so it reaches into so many more parts of our lives. Like, even if you're not a fan of like Harry Potter or something, you probably know like the Zodiac sign for your birthday, your sun sign or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
For sure. Kate says, um, I feel like maybe it's coming back because in a world where autonomy and in- inclusivity is at risk, it gives us a sense of control, purpose, and identity. Yeah, the control is really interesting to dig into because, yeah, in this time where we feel so out of control of our own world, it's, like, nice to think that, like, you have your horoscope and, like, all your, like, readings of what's going on in the universe and how it's going to affect you. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. We kind of touched on this already, but I just wanted to start with our relationships with astrology in terms of, like, how long we've been paying attention to it and what drew our attention to it in the first place. Like, I think I've always known I'm a Leo, but I've never really dug into what Leo even means until like the last kind of like four years. And I do feel like I identify with a lot of the Leo traits, um, but I haven't ever dug deeper into it because of how skeptical society is. It's has been about it for so long. I've just kind of been like, it's fun, but I get more, the more I hear people talk about like the intricacies of what different things mean, the more interested I get in it. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's really fascinating. Like, it's really cool to like, see how they interconnect and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've been paying more attention to it just because of all that. I just started like paying more attention to like when my friend's birthdays are and like how that I tend to like bond with people of certain different like moms. Yeah, you're so right, Christine. Like that's a really good point because one thing I noticed when I started getting more into astrology, every single person that I am super close to has a cancer placement, except for one girl and we're not even really that close. <laughs> but like they all have cancer placements and I think that's so interesting. Like they're people from different yeah. walks of life, different areas and like somehow I'm drawn to that energy and I think that that is super interesting. Yeah. 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 I like I mean growing up Christian and still having a relationship with Jesus, I feel like I've always kind of held astrology at like arm's length. Like it's never really been something that I wanted to get into because we were told it's like, you know, witchy and like you don't want to put something up higher than Christ and things like that. But I'm like it's really is a tool, though, to to uh, to understand people and to understand yourself and I've always known I was a Pisces and getting into more of that and knowing like it's the last sign and like all the signs are in Pisces and understanding that. Is that true, yes, Christy? That is true. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I get along with literally anyone. So um, it's it's really kind of and I also seeing the different men and women versus um, like a Pisces man or like a Leo man or like, a you know, that too is also very different. Yes. So it's kind of been fun to learn more about it. And like Christine said, like paying attention to your friends and like understanding who I mean I get along with everyone so it's like it, I, the signs don't matter to me as much um but it, it is it is a fun way to understand yourself yeah. all right so Chrissy's gonna walk us through our birth charts which we've never done before so we're really excited she's gonna focus on like our big three which is like I'm sure you'll explain but sun moon rising the things that you hear people talk about all the time and I haven't even looked at the birth chart yet so I'm gonna open the link yeah. that you gave us oh yeah <laughs> I'm going to open it. I'm so excited. (laughs) But yeah, so we had to give you our birthdays, our birth city, and our birth time for these. (laughs) Which is so interesting Mm -hmm. in general. And it works off of like all those intricate random thing seemingly random but i guess it's to pinpoint exactly where right. you were on the Earth signs that were like coming was. over the horizon your rising sign that's going to be different dependent on like where you were in the world when you were born and it changes very quickly whereas other things are more generational like the outer planets like neptune and pluto those don't change as often so um yeah hmm. it does play into it <laughs> i just opened up mine it doesn't say I see my birth date down at the bottom, but it doesn't say like, what are the things? So, um, there's a lot that goes on with birth charts. Um, so everything that you're looking at in the link that I sent you is like everything, all the planets, all the modalities, all the, Oh wow. You have to scroll down. It has all the aspects, all the houses. Um, and for those of you who maybe don't know, um, your birth chart is basically just a map of the sky at the time you were born. It's a big circle. Usually you'll see the 12 pie pieces that represent the different houses. We won't get into houses today. It's a lot, but, um, 
yeah, the most important ones that affect you and your core personality are, like Christine said, your big three, which is your sun, your moon, and your rising or your ascendant. So if it helps to think about it this way, you can think of each planet placement because there's also Mercury, Venus, Mars, all of these things. Think of each planet as the what of your life and um, the how is the planet. So the what is... This is... <laughs> so confusing even just scrolling okay wait a minute so can you start with like what you thought yes. we were based off of personality yes, that's a good okay place to start so um i texted cheyenne before i looked up your birth charts and told her my guesses for you guys and these were my guesses uh for christine i thought you might have an air placement in your big three because you're a wordsmith you're very chatty and you've said before on the podcast that um like when you're texting guys and stuff you like to have someone that can keep up the conversation and that's a very air sign kind of trade yeah. i was thinking maybe like jim and i Interesting. Yeah. Um, my other guess was that you might have more fire in your chart, um, possibly even a Leo rising like me. I'm a Leo rising because you are so yeah. vivacious and have very fire energy. Um, and I was thinking, if not those two things, maybe an earth placement, but I don't get strong earth vibes from you. So I was like, maybe a Mercury ruled earth sign like Virgo, but like, eh, I don't know. I was more convinced on the air and the fire. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what's interesting? I just scrolled down and I think I saw the moon. I don't know. I just remember the last time I did this, I had two Leos, mm -hmm. but I didn't see two Leos when no, I was scrolling. No, you do have two yeah. Leos. You're, um, you oh, are I do. Leo rising. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> is, um, is, a, is a Leo a fire yes. sign? Yes, Leo is a fire yes. sign. So, okay. yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about it more in depth as we go like one at a time because I was – very intrigued yeah. by the fact that both of you have double placements. Christine is a double Leo and Natasha is a double mm. Pisces. <laughs> um, Yo, nice. yeah. so, okay. So my <laughs> guess is for Natasha. Um, I was convinced that she had to have an earth placement somewhere in her big three, because you give very like, we got to get shit done kind of energy. Like you kind of ground mm. based on what I've seen, you kind of ground more, yeah. um, and so that gives very earth vibes to me. I was also thinking you could possibly have more water placements in your big three or your big six. Um, big six being Mercury and Venus and Mars in addition to sun, moon and rising. Um, I was thinking if okay. not earth and water, then maybe Aquarius, which is an air sign, but it's like a humanitarian air sign that loves to help people. Uh, but I was much more sold on mm. the earth and the water. And I'm very proud of myself for my guesses because I got a lot of them right. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So wait, it's just so we can write it down because I can't look at the chart without my eyes going crazy. So what were each of us ended up being in terms of the big <laughs> so, three? Christine, you are a Leo sun, Capricorn moon, which is an okay. earth sign, and Leo Ooh. rising. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And Natasha, Natasha is a Pisces sun, Pisces moon, Virgo rising. Pisces moon, wow. Virgo rising. Okay, and what are I you? I am a Gemini sun, Taurus moon, Leo rising. Oh, wow, you have all different yeah. ones. Taurus <laughs> it leads to a lot of conflicting feelings because Gemini is like, I hate routine, and Taurus is like, please, can I stay home and just only have routine? <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so walk us okay. through. So, yeah. Let's start with sun signs um christine what do you know about your leo sun sign this is the one that you know just from knowing your birthday yeah so i feel like leos are very um they love attention <laughs> like there are a lot of like performers entertainers positive attitude like go-getter ambitious yeah. attitude leadership qualities a lot of leos like to be leaders and stuff and that's kind of like the vibe I've gotten. Yeah, you're 100% right. So for those who don't know what your sun sign really is, it's kind of like your ego and your motivation. It's kind of the anchor of who you are, um, what you want from life. Think of it as like the thing that brings you life and energy. Mm. Um, so yeah, the Leo is actually ruled by the sun. So Leo is super happy when it's a sun sign um, because that's where it feels most at home. And it makes you, like you said, there's a little bit of a stereotype of being like vain or prideful or self-centered and attention grabbing, but like really you're just main character energy is what it is. Like, <laughs> um, you know, you're very naturally magnetic. You garner attention without having to try too hard. Um, you're confident and you naturally feel called to kind of express yourself creatively. Um, and we'll talk more about the Leo rising when we start talking about rising signs, but that energy is like amplified because your rising sign 
and your sun sign are the same. So your external projection is super Leo. Like you just give off <laughs> super like passionate, <gasps> creative, energetic, like spotlight stealing kind of vibes. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So Natasha. It feels accurate. <laughs> I thought it might. Um, Natasha, what do you know about your Pisces sun sign? Um, well, Pisces is a water sign. And so it's a very like go with the flow type of sitch. Um, it's at the end of the birth chart. So there's every sign within the Pisces. We're also very emotional. Uh, we can be flippant sometimes, I think, because of the water sign. Um uh, I think creative. Mm -hmm. We're also very creative. Yeah, I just know about the big emotional <laughs> thing. That's about yes, what I get. That's very true. So it's interesting because how I was just saying that Christine with her double Leo, it's very external because her sun and her rising. With you, everything about Pisces is very internal because it's your sun and your moon. And we'll talk more about the moon sign in a second. But um, a lot of that Pisces mm -hmm. energy is turned inwards for you. Um, so like you said, Pisces is very creative, artistic, kind of like daydreamer vibes. Um, Pisces has a stereotype mm -hmm. of kind of like being lost in their own head and just kind of like off in never, never land. Um, but really, you're just like, you're someone who's very much a hopeless romantic, you see the good in everyone. Um, and Pisces can need grounding, which is a good thing when we talk about your rising sign, because I think that Virgo Earth energy can ground your Pisces and stop you from maybe overthinking too much. But okay. yeah, it gives off wise old soul kind of vibes, because like you said, it's the last sign in the Zodiac. So it's very much like a deep philosophical, like taking on everyone's energy kind of thing, which can kind of lead to... <laughs> this feels so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about your moon signs, though. Did you guys want to say anything else about your sun signs or ask any questions? Natasha, how do you feel about your sun sign reading? Um, yeah, no, it's very, it's very me. <laughs> but it's interesting that you, that it's like, it's turned inward. So mm -hmm. um, because of my moon placement, you said yes. that the Pisces energy is turned inward. So mm -hmm. would you say I'm, I'm like normal Pisces <laughs> because of that? Or am I a bit different? Um, I you're like amplified Pisces um okay so yeah do you want me to move into talking about the moon signs then yeah yeah okay. so you want to go do Natasha's moon signs first since you're in the yeah house. sure um yeah. so your moon sign is your emotional inner world it's what you need to feel safe and secure mm. and it's kind of like the parts of your heart and your brain that like other people don't necessarily get to see. Um, so it's very much your internal world. Um, so that's why I think that your Pisces is kind of yeah. turned inwards because um, double Pisces energy kind of, it amplifies the creativity, the artisticness, the daydreamerness, and it can kind of maybe sometimes you feel like you kind of get lost in your emotions or in the emotions of others. Like you can maybe feel overwhelmed very easily um, by taking on too much from other people um, because mm. it makes you very empathetic and kind. But sometimes Pisces the fish needs to swim away when things get to be a little too overwhelming. So it can definitely be kind of turned up to an intense degree. Um, you would probably rather deal with those emotions through some sort of escapism, like reading, for example, um, rather than like, yep. quote unquote, burdening, as you would possibly call it, um, other people with your feelings, because you're very sensitive, and you'd rather express yourself through art, you don't really want to like, necessarily talk out those feelings with everyone or all the time. But um, you really find a lot of that emotional gratification through artistic pursuits. Um, and things mm -hmm. like that. I don't know if that resonates at all, but <laughs> that's how I read it. <laughs> it does and it doesn't because I, um, I mean, I definitely feel uh, channel my emotions through my art, yeah. but I'm also a big talker. I love to talk through my mm -hmm. emotions and open up. I would say Christine's maybe a bit more conservative in that than I mm -hmm. am. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, your rising sign is ruled by Mercury, which is a communicator kind of sign. Um, so I think that kind of adds a layer on top of it um, that maybe makes mm. you a little bit more communicative. Um, but yeah, water signs are definitely very in tune with their own emotions and the emotions of others. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the other end of the spectrum <laughs> with Christine and her Capricorn moon. Um, 
What is the Capricorn moon? Okay, before we move into that, I was just scrolling through to get to the Capricorn, and like I found a thing that says she's key key trades. She's energetic, willful, unafraid of challenge, and sometimes combative. <laughs> combative, and I was like, this feels so accurate to me. Yes. <laughs> Capricorn is is what is that December? Yes, that is the um, December going into January Earth sign. Oh, mm-hmm. is that what your mom's sign was? January 14th, I think she was a Cancer. She would have been an Aquarius. No, Cancer's June. Possibly. Maybe Capricorn, but possibly Aquarius, because Aquarius is the second half of January. Oh, oh yeah, because oh, okay. Cancer is what, like, Jenna is and stuff. Oh, she, she, I think she was a Capricorn, because oh, cool. Heather's a Capricorn, and Heather was born in j- June, sorry, January 17th. Gotcha, so. yeah. My mom is also a Capricorn. Um, so, <laughs> so, Christine, the reason your chart is interesting to me is because your sun sign is so happy to be Leo and your moon sign is so <laughs> mad that it's a Capricorn because <laughs> Capricorn, what does Capricorn that mean? is not happy in the moon placement uh, because it is, it's one of the hardest moon placements because Capricorn is an earth sign that does not feel comfortable expressing its emotions. Um, Capricorn is stereotyped mm. as being like, the ambitious go-getter, overachiever, very reserved, very the opposite of Leo energy, very reserved, not very outwardly expressive. Um, so there was something you said in the podcast last week that made the Capricorn moon click into place to me. You said something like, I live and breathe for achieving things or something like that. And I yeah, was like, oh, is. yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Enneagram 3. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, the cat moon just jumped out. Um, this is how Capricorn and moon feels most fulfilled by accomplishing their goals and having something to work towards. Um, so I feel mm-hmm. like you've talked before about how people assume that you're an extrovert because of that big Leo energy, but a lot of times you feel more introverted. And I think that this is where that comes from uh, because Capricorn is more serious and mm-hmm. reserved. So um, she has high expectations for herself and for others. She's very strong willed and very disciplined. Um and can kind of, it plays with Leo in the sense that Leo is confident and Capricorn is always right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it can, oh my God. So it can come off almost a little bossy, <laughs> but just very like, like yep. I know what's right and this is how we're going to get from point A to point B and you can all fall in line behind me. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> this is a- accurate, <laughs> oldest child energy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I see it as, like, Capricorn is your drive and Leo is your passion. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. That's so interesting. <laughs> it, it's, like, it does make sense with also, like, the reserved thing because I – my instinct is to be mm-hmm. really reserved with my emotions. Yeah. And I've had to work on that a lot, being, like, more open and discussing mm-hmm. things out loud instead of, like, alluding to them slowly. <laughs> yes that feels very Capricorn to me like you don't want to just be super open and like placing your emotions out for everyone to partake in you're very like you keep them close to your chest and only let a select few people really see like the deeper emotional stuff Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 interesting (laughs) wow Capricorn yeah what is a Capricorn a goat yes Capricorn's a goat oh it is yeah Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Wow. Yeah. Did you guys have any other thoughts on your moon sign before I start talking about rising signs? What's your moon sign? My moon yeah. sign is Taurus. Taurus. Yeah. What does Taurus mean? So Taurus is an Earth sign, also, but Taurus is a little bit more on the like creature comfort side. Um, Taurus likes to have nice material objects, good food, um, a comfortable environment, and very much likes stability and routine and stuff which like I said earlier does not always play nice with my Gemini energy <laughs> like I, like have, mm. I like to have routine but then I get bored of that routine and my Gemini's like we got to do something else <laughs> <laughs> um, so, interesting yeah that's that's my Taurus moon <laughs> she's fighting for her life with the air and the fire <laughs> Taurus is like I have a few like Taurus friends. Obviously, I don't know their birth. My charts. brother is Taurus. Yeah. Oh, well, well, maybe this doesn't apply to him. But, but I we probably need to know his birth chart. But I feel like they're very grounding. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my best friends is a Taurus, and yeah, she definitely has that kind of like grounded, stabilized. My my boyfriend's a Taurus. Um, definitely that very 
loyal, stable, like in it for the long haul kind of vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's also the stereotype of Taurus being stubborn, which is true. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. What's, what's the next one? The rising. Yes. So your rising sign is basically how people perceive you. It's how you move through the world. Um, And honestly, if you're going to read your horoscope, most people advise that you look at the horoscope for your rising sign if it's different from your sun sign, which for you, it wouldn't be Christine. But for most people, your rising sign is probably going to be different. And that's because your rising sign decides where all of your houses fall in your natal chart. So when we're looking at trans, like the transits of planets through the sky, and like Saturn is currently in the seventh house and things like that, um, your first house determines which area of life transits are going to affect you in. Um, So you know, this sounds like math. Like, <laughs> there is math involved. I haven't even discussed degrees yet. So let's. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. It's a, it, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, but so if you, you know, to, you know, Natasha, because she has a different rising than her son and anyone else who's listening, try yeah. looking at your rising horoscope. If you feel like your sun sign horoscope doesn't resonate uh, because it might feel a little better. Not that your sun is completely inaccurate, but you'll see more relevant themes with your rising. Um, but anyways, so mm. your rising is how you present yourself. Um, so Christine, like I said, you give off extreme Leo vibes because your rising sign is mirroring your sun sign. So you give off that warm, friendly magnetic energy that people can't help but be drawn to. Um, and like you said, you're like a natural leader um, and an influencer and you're just fun to be around. You know, people love being around Leo energy because who doesn't want to be around the main character, you know, like, <laughs> um, sometimes though, it's, especially with that Capricorn moon, sometimes Leo rising people feel like they kind of have to do everything on their own. Um, you know, they don't want to like make it hard for like other people. Like they want to just kind of like get everything accomplished on their own. Right. Um, so yeah, all of your Leo traits are really kind of amplified and you just like radiate that charismatic Leo energy. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the thing and it's like Leo rising people are kids at heart. Yeah. That's that seems accurate <laughs> too. All this stuff is so interesting. Like it's just so interesting because like as you're explaining it, it feels so accurate. And like and Natasha's feels so accurate. So it's like, is everyone's so- accurate like would it be accurate if you were sliding into a different like house and looking at it probably not yeah. like I don't know it's so interesting I've only met one no, person in my entire life who like I can't figure out their birth chart <laughs> um where I just um, like the placements don't make sense to me but I also don't know yeah. them super well it's one of my friend's husbands um so I don't know him super super well but um yeah usually I can kind of see where the themes are coming through and it's yeah it's very interesting <laughs> yeah it's so interesting like the more I read in this little paragraph I'm like huh yeah (laughs) where um where is the 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 rising so if you go to ascendant it says ascendant is um and I think on that sign ascendant is like near the bottom isn't it yeah it's like there mine says they're given to rash decisions (laughs) temper tantrums and excesses yeah Uh, (laughs) Um, but they have plenty of staying power drive and their idealism keeps them from getting into too much trouble. Um, their desire to oversee the going ons in their circle can sometimes amount to bossiness. Yeah. If the desire doesn't go far. However, it can just mean a person who wants to make sure the people they love are all right. Yeah. And that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, why is the ascendant so important? Um, so the, wait, what is this? Sometimes they're walking commercials. In fact, Leo Rising people make excellent promoters. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Um, so, okay, so the reason your rising sign is so important, I don't want to get into the houses too much because it's a lot to explain, but your rising sign is your first house. And your first house is the self, your identity, who you are as a person, and every other planet in your chart is going to fall into different houses based on where and when you were born. Um, and all of those different houses are going to be ruled by different zodiac signs depending on where your rising was so every single leo rising we have the same rulers of the 12 different houses what's different is the planets 
and where the planets are placed throughout our houses and the degrees that the planets are at and the angles they make to each other. Um, that might have been really confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's the basic answer. <laughs> it's like once you get into like the angles and stuff, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that part is still a learning process for me. But basically, Wait. it's just the your rising sign is your first house of self. Okay. Okay. What is Natasha's? Let's talk about yes. hers. Um, so Natasha is a Virgo rising. Um, and Virgo is an earth sign. So Virgos are known for being very detail oriented, very analytical. Um, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So that's where the communication aspect comes into peace. Um you're very intelligent, very practical. Um, you like to kind of maybe fix things or understand things. And you like to use that to help make people's lives easier. Um, sometimes people can take advantage of that. But, um, mm. you know, <laughs> um, Virgos can be a bit of a perfectionist. They can be a little bit critical. But Virgo Rising loves to help people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, which one are you laughing at, Christine? <laughs> laughing at your perfection is critical <laughs> does that resonate <laughs> <laughs> that's ugly <laughs> um, yeah yeah but virgo comes off a little more modest a little more reserved not really living for the spotlight um i think it gives your pisces a little bit more of an edge what i really found interesting is that Pisces and Virgo are opposite signs. They're on opposite sides of the circle of zodiac signs from each other. Um, so oh. they balance each other in a lot of ways. Virgo has a lot of what you would need as a double Pisces, like with the grounding and the more detail focus. So whereas Pisces can get a little bit mm. lost in the waters of emotions, Virgo, that earth mm. sign comes in and is like, wait a second, <laughs> pay attention. These are the details. This is what we need to be thinking about right um so it can be mm -hmm. really nice to have that grounding energy like earth and water are friends in the same way that air and fire are friends um so that can be really yeah. nice to have uh yeah i mean the, it definitely resonates with me even like like reading this paragraph the whole like being more reserved and shy doesn't necessarily resonate mm -hmm. with me um, I think I, and like not wanting the spotlight. I mean, I think that goes against being an influencer. Um, <laughs> yeah, but the, the, it says many people with this position have a tendency to attract or be attracted to people who need help. Mm -hmm. Their relationships may be confusing as a result, which, um, yeah, that's, I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. And you know, sometimes there are things that don't resonate and that makes total sense. I think that um, there's other placements too, like your Mercury, how you communicate with people, your Venus, how you are in relationships, mm -hmm. other things that can add more nuance. Um, but this is just kind of like a very basic, like, you know, the, the, t the things that tend to show up, you know, and I think a lot yeah. of it resonates and maybe not all of it does, but it's still an interesting picture to kind of like see all the different things falling into place and see how it shows yeah. up or doesn't show up in your life. Yeah. And so what was your rising sign again? I the am, Gemini? I'm a Leo rising like Christine. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cheyenne asked, Natasha, do you think this stuff also applies to Alex since y'all are twins? You'll theoretically be the same. Actually, no. Um, Alex is born 52 minutes after me. So that can make a big kind of changes. Yeah. It kind of changes some things. He's still going to be a Pisces. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. Would his like moon and rising sign change? It could change. I've seen people's moon signs change with just a 30 minute difference. Um, I've seen people's moon signs not change with a like two hour difference. So it really just kind of depends on what was happening at the time. Um, but that's definitely enough time that at least the rising sign is probably different. Maybe some of the other uh, inner planet placements as well. Mm -hmm. that's really interesting yeah uh, uh, kate says are you able to share the link that you use to calculate the i used um cafe astrology's uh natal charts so and i'll put this the link to that in the show notes so y'all can check out yours i'm okay i'm scrolling through the houses now and i'm i'm okay i'm trying to like understand here so the houses like is it the the higher number house the further away you are from this or are these just like different no. traits in different houses so hopefully this won't confuse you further but there's 12 houses okay because there's 12 yes. zodiac signs so 
Okay. So the first house, for example, is similar to Aries. It's not necessarily ruled by Aries, but it's a similar area of life to Aries, which is all about the self and your identity. The second house. So that's what the ascendant is? Yes. Your ascendant is always going to be your first house. And it's always going to be a self and identity house, regardless of what you have as you're rising. So each of the 12 houses is a different area of life. And that area of life is similar to the zodiac sign that is that number. That it represents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So it says Leo on house two. Two. Okay. So that's Taurus ish kind of stuff um so we're thinking okay we're thinking money material possessions um and things oh, like that interesting mm-hmm. my okay it says my i'm a libra house and that my income may come either as a result of an advantageous marriage or union <laughs> oh my god I am Lizzie Bennett. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mine says that financial success will be easy thanks to the support of influential people Ooh. and tendency to spend more than what is earned. That's not <laughs> correct. Financial progress is slow but steady. Generous with loved ones and children. Sign and house placement of the sun may su- may show money making channels. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I think it's interesting to look at everything because I think cafe astrology, it's one flaw is that it kind of gives you a summary of all these different things, but doesn't always necessarily, it gives you a few combinations of how these things play together, but it doesn't really do it for like everything. So someone like me who kind of like knows how it all fits together a little bit better can kind of show you like this part doesn't make sense because it doesn't really play well with this part of your chart and that kind of stuff. Okay. (laughs) So what's house three mean? So house three like, is Gemini related kind of things because Gemini is the third sign. So we're okay. thinking communication in relationships and things like that. Um, how you use words and language and things like that. Okay. Mine, I feel like makes sense for me. It says Virgo and it says she may pull everything to pieces. Analyzing, criticizing, overthinking and overanalyzing is probable. <laughs> She's proactive, tending to details and taking care of things in an efficient manner. Yeah. Usually won't take on anything without examining the pros and cons. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, one thing I thought was interesting about Natasha's was that her son in Pisces. So we talked about how she has this Pisces Virgo energy, right? Her son yeah. is in the sixth house, which is the Virgo ruled areas of life. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, so you've got a lot Wait. of like Pisces Virgo energy what does going that on. Mean? Um, so it's mm, the houses are a little bit harder for me. <laughs> I'm still kind of like, yeah, okay. I, I will ask. It's, it keeps getting confusing when you're like yeah. saying two it, things. The sun is in the sixth yeah. house. <laughs> so the sixth house is things like it can be your health, um, your lifestyle, your daily routine, oh, and things like okay. that. Because Virgo is like all about the details and stuff. It's all about routines. So your routines, like your work life, uh, your organization, your time management, things like that. So yeah, mine says Capricorn. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so your Capricorn moon huh. is in your sixth house. Okay, wow. So that like really amps up the like, you know, getting work done kind of vibes. Yeah, it says can work hard unceasingly and patiently. <laughs> Weak point, the cold, changes in temperature. <laughs> <laughs> There is some, I'm not as subscribed to this part, but there are a lot of people who think that your rising sign at least can have a lot to do with your appearance. So like Leo risings are said to be known for their hair. Like we have very like voluminous kind of hair. Um, Wow. Which I think is more true for you than me, but like my hair can get pretty like, sometimes I just also have an autoimmune disorder. Beautiful hair. (laughs) <laughs> oh wait what does that mean for pisces then or, or sorry um, is is this the rising sign for, yeah so for virgo rising um i think that it's supposed to be that you have more of like so virgo is the maiden um so kind of like a more youthful like a rounder face like um more uh like younger features kind of like a more romantic vibe this is so interesting yeah they have visual Hmm. things for each house yeah there's so much to it dude like there are some people that think that you should dress based on your venus sign um to more fully (laughs) embody like to attract the kind of relationships you want (laughs) wait what's the Hmm. venus sign so think of venus you know venus like the in roman mythology how it's like aphrodite yeah second planet from the sun (laughs) Yeah. 
don't think of <laughs> Venus being Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. It's it's your relationships, your love relationships. It's um, you know the things that you find beauty in in the world. Um, your relationship to love. So what house is that? Um, it depends. Let me see. What are we supposed to be dressing as? <laughs> I'm not as into that part of the astrology because I I don't know, but um, you should have a Venus sign somewhere on your chart, and it should tell you what house that that's okay. in. Um, Let me. Mine's Aquarius. Okay. Um, no, if sorry, sign, it's not. Wait, it's not. It's Aries. Sign, oh. Libra is next to Venus. You know. Wait. So okay, it says my Venus is Cancer. Okay. Oh, that's the same Venus sign as Sabrina Carpenter. I love that oh for my you. God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. So, so, what does that mean? What do they look at? What do they um, dress like? I was, I'm not sure about the. I think that for the dressing part, um, honestly, Sabrina Carpenter embodies her Cancer Venus really well with like her pastels and her very like romantic um, kind of vibe because Cancer is a pretty romantic sign it's you know it's a nice venus to have uh because it's very in touch with its emotions <laughs> cancer is a water sign um i'm not really as sure about aries venus i haven't i'm not big on aries i don't have a lot of aries placement people in my life so i haven't done as much research on aries mm. in the other placements but i know that aries can be kind of impulsive um and brash it's the first sign of the zodiac so it's very like wait who's aries she, uh, natasha said Me. she has aries venus oh oh i didn't see i didn't hear you say yeah. that okay <laughs> It says, um, I just Googled it. Um, it says you might be passionate, bold, and enthusiastic about love. For my love life, you might be the one to initiate romance and you might enjoy the thrill of the chase. You might fall in and out of love quickly and your emotions might be whiplash. I don't know. Yeah, I have one random Aries placement too that I don't really resonate with very much. It's my Mars placement, um, which is your approach to War? <laughs> conflict, um, how you have conflict with people but also your sex drive um and yeah i don't really identify very much with my aries mars i can see aspects of it but i think it gets lost with everything else especially because my chart is very earth dominant i have a lot of other earth placements so i don't really resonate mm. with that one as much <laughs> my mars is in taurus it says mm. slow and steady wins the race these goal-oriented people are not known for their speed but staying in power is tremendous <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, hmm. Did you guys want to know? So I looked up some celebrities that have. Oh, yeah. Tell <laughs> us. That have the same placements yes. as you guys. Um, also, just because we're all Harry Potter fans here, I thought it was interesting. So, Natasha, you have a combination of Luna Lovegood and Hermione energy. Because oh. Luna's a Pisces <laughs> and Hermione's a Virgo. <laughs> Christine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What do I have? Harry and Voldemort. Yes, and Voldemort. <laughs> oh, Wait, are you I kidding? Also, serious. You can also say Severus Snape because he's also a Capricorn, but Tom Riddle is a Capricorn, <sighs> and Harry is a Leo. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> really good work ethic that Voldemort <laughs> very ambitious <laughs> so, um, great but so terrible that. things <laughs> so I thought I think Natasha's really gonna like her celebrities for her big three um, okay I love how so, I'm not <laughs> there was a lot for yours but so Natasha for your big three the Pisces Pisces Virgo Sean Afton has the same big three as you. Oh, um, that? Sam. Sam was. Sam Wise. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And also John Barrowman from um, Doctor Who. Um, he played Captain Jack Harkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very, he's very yeah. fun. He has he's the also, same big three as you. He's also in uh, Supernatural. Yeah, that's right. I forgot he was in Supernatural. Mm -hmm. Um so those are the main two. You also have the same sun and moon, so Pisces, Pisces, as Cindy Crawford. Okay. Hmm. And Kesha. Kesha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and then I also did Sun Rising. So you have Pisces Virgo. Um, so the same as Steve Jobs. Okay. <laughs> and Kurt Cobain. Oh, oh wow. 
Yeah. I don't so. know if a, that's a that's, weird list. That is a very weird list. It's a, it's a mixture of personalities. <laughs> I'm never going to get past Voldemort and Harry. <laughs> You really have some opposing energy in your chart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, so Christine celebrities, honestly, there wasn't much with your entire big three. Uh, but the <laughs> one person that I did find, her name is, I think, Tessa Far- Farmiga. Uh, she oh. was in a, she was an American Horror Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was the only one I could find that was, like, modern. All the other ones that came up were, like, people from the 30s and 40s. So, uh, <laughs> But um, your sun and moon, so um, Leo Capricorn, Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> and Phoebe Bridgers. Oh, wow. Oh, yay. <laughs> yeah. I think you're really going to like your sun and rising one. So for sun and rising, Leo, Leo, we have Demi Lovato. Okay. And Matthew Perry. Oh, wait, I do feel very connected to both. (laughs) They both have a lot of addiction issues. (laughs) Is that a Leo Leo thing? Oh my God. God. It could be. (laughs) Maybe. Um, No, I feel like we do have addictive personalities in terms of loving Mm. things intensely. Yeah, I feel that a little bit too. Maybe not quite as intensely with like the double Leo, but I mean, I'm a Leo rising too, so I have yeah. a lot of that similar energy, and I can definitely see that in myself. So, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Wow, Matthew Perry, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, that was so enlightening and so fun, Christy. <laughs> Thank you for bringing all of your knowledge on this really intricate subject i feel like you've shined a light on a lot of like the house things <laughs> that i yeah. do not understand <laughs> yeah like i said i know it's a lot but um it is very it's a really cool look into the whole picture of who yeah. you are as a person can you give us a rundown of like what traits you associate with like every house really quickly like if you learn someone's a house you're like oh they yeah. must be this <laughs> like my one word stereotypes or something yes yes, yes. Aries, impulsive, Taurus, stubborn, Gemini, chatty, cancer. Wait, 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 wait. gotta go a little slower. Oh, because... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm trying to like place each month. Can you do it in order? Yes. Um, I'm, so I'm okay. doing it in order of the zodiac. So Aries starts oh, up with okay. March April? going into April, end of March, beginning of okay. April. Um, okay. Impulsive, Taurus, okay. which is end of April, beginning of May. Stubborn. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> Gemini, which is end of May, beginning of June. Uh, chatty. All right. Cancer, which is end of June, beginning of July. Um, I would say that was such a hard one. Um, mom friend. <laughs> oh, interesting. That doesn't huh. coordinate with any of my my cancer friends. Huh. Cancer is interesting, and I could go on a whole thing about it, but cancer is lots of emotions, but also with the crab claws. Like, they will get you if you, like, threaten their people. So <laughs> that's kind of how I view it. <laughs> the crab okay, claws. Yeah, because they are the crab. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we have Leo, which is end of July, beginning of August. Um, main character. <laughs> hmm. um, then we have Virgo, which is end of August, beginning of September. Uh, uh, Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of a positive word. Oh, God. oh. I wanted to say like picky, detail oriented. Like okay, Beyonce. Like Beyonce's I, a Virgo. I feel like I know a lot yeah. of Virgos. Yeah, yeah. We, sorry, we have a lot of Virgo. <laughs> Tess is a Virgo. <laughs> We have a lot of Virgos in the Patreon, too. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of Virgo friends, too, yeah. I think. I love Virgos. Don't get me wrong. But, like, Virgo is one of those signs that has, like, I can definitely see their negative traits, but I still love them, <laughs> despite mm. the, like, criticalness and stuff. Like... I can see the picky thing, actually, mm-hmm. for some of the Virgos I know. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to go to detail-oriented. Like... I think yeah, that's better. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's Virgo from um, – end of... okay, so then we have Libra. Um, which is end of September through beginning of October. Um, I want to say fair. They're very concerned okay. with like justice and balance. Um, I feel like a lot of times I end up dating men who are that one. Libra. I just forgot it already. Libra. <laughs> Libras are nice. I like Libras. Um, one of my best friends is a Libra. Um, 
Okay, then after Libra is Scorpio, and that's um, end of October, beginning of November. Um... Bitchy? <laughs> oh, my God. You said it! <laughs> my, I mean, okay, my ex-husband is Scorpio, so, like, the tendency to be negative is there, but I, I will not. I will just say mysterious. <laughs> hmm. All right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Then let's see. Okay, so no, I think it's like a known fact that Scorpios tend to be like they're brash and bitchy. They're the, the emo <laughs> kids of the zodiac. Mm. Uh, they have they have a lot of up at, like extremes in their emotions. Yes, they are. They are. They are a water sign, and they are a very fiery water sign. Um, mm. So after Scorpio comes sense. Sagittarius with end of November, beginning of December. Taylor Swift is a Sagittarius. Um, yes. I want to say my mom's a Sagittarius. Yeah, Taylor's a Sag- Taylor. Taylor Toro's a Sagittarius. Our friend yeah, and Taylor. Swift. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love Sagittariuses. Um, I want to say adventurous. Hmm, yes. Yeah. Um, and then let's see. After Sagittarius comes Capricorn. Um, end of December, beginning of January. Um, I want to say meticulous. Yeah. Okay. Hardworking feels like the common stereotype, but I feel like meticulous yeah. fits better. Um, and then we have Aquarius. <laughs> the first word that comes to mind is like weirdos, but I mean that <laughs> I mean that in a positive way. Like Aquarius is very yeah. like march to the beat of your own drum kind of vibes. Um so I mean it as mm-hmm. an absolute positive. Like um Yeah. So definitely no, we love yes. weirdos. <laughs> I am one. I just don't have any Aquarius placements. Um, <laughs> and then finally, uh, we have Pisces, um, which I would probably say, like, daydreamer. Emotional daydreamer. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I was going to ask, now Now that you know our chart, does it make sense that Christina and I are friends? Or does it not make sense? <laughs> like, how how do are, are we compatible? Yeah, I think so. So I think that there's two ways you can look at it. Because sometimes... Are we compatible? <laughs> I can run a compatibility report if you wanted me to. <laughs> but I think that sometimes it can go one of two ways. I don't feel like there's really a rule to it. Sometimes when you have, like, opposite... Um, elements like the fire and water sometimes that doesn't mix well but sometimes it can balance and I think that the way you guys are set up I think your earth sees each other um, and balances and I think that also Christine's chart is earth ruled she has more earth placements than other elements Um, so I feel like Mm -hmm. maybe those that goes with your water and your Virgo really well Um, so I see y'all's charts as being opposite in a lot of ways but in a way that balances not in a way that fights okay is natasha's chart water ruled um say i can pull it up i think it um i think hers is water ruled um so yeah if yours is earth ruled and hers is water ruled those are compatible elements and i think it would make sense that um you guys get along so well yeah i I have have uh, six waters yeah Mm-hmm. Wait, where do you see these? Um, like under... The, oh, in the top? Yeah, at the top, under where it lists all your planets with the Roman numeral houses. It has, like, masculine, feminine, and then it has the modalities, oh. cardinal, fixed, and mutable, and then it has the elements. Oh, eight oh, feminine? Oh, what does that mean? Wait, mine says fire, earth, air, water. Oh, mm-hmm. it has the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't get it. <laughs> Um, yeah interesting wow this is so weird (laughs) because it's funny because i have a lot of leo friends Mm. um but i would feel like and i also have a lot of pisces friends interesting but yeah i have more leo friends than i think most pisces do I think you bring that also, grounding energy for Leo. I think that your Virgo like really kind of helps anchor that more like wild and vivacious energy. <laughs> it's interesting that like fire's the least one. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, well, air is. Air has zero. <laughs> that surprises me so much, actually. I mean, I can see where your love of words and like stories and stuff comes from in other places, but usually with someone who's as like into words as you are, like 
usually I would expect to see some kind of air placement. So that's really interesting to me. Interesting. And I am an airbender. <laughs> <laughs> I have, an avatar. I have heard it said that you crave what you don't have. So like me, for example, I only have uh, one water placement and I'm attracted to cancer replacement people. So interesting. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And Natasha only has one fire placement. And oh, she attracts a lot okay. of Leos. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's so interesting. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. All right. Well, this was so cool. Thank yeah. you so much, Chrissy. We're gonna do a Merry Kiss Cliff before we wrap mm. up. All right, I made up this Merry Kiss Cliff last night. We are doing Merry Kiss Cliff, your Hogwarts house, Enneagrams, or astrology. <laughs> I love this. It's kind of hard. <laughs> I know, it is hard. I, like, didn't know what to do because um, I do really identify a lot with all of them now. <laughs> what is your Enneagram? You said you're a three? I'm a three-wing okay. four. Three-wing four, okay. Yeah. What are you? Um, I'm a nine-wing eight. Oh, okay. I've never met anyone who was a nine. Well, you did. Maureen's a nine. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it actually makes sense because Maureen also is really in tune with what everyone else is. <laughs> yeah. What's yours, Natasha? A two wing three. Okay. Hmm. The, um. the, the three is the Leo energy. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> the, the three is the achiever. Well, like, according to Christy, it's Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> but also three does have leo traits too as like leadership things and like kind of like chameleon like you know adapting to like your people mm-hmm. you're around to make them like you <laughs> like that Chris, sort of vibe chrissy what's your hogwarts house i'm a ravenclaw okay that makes sense i'm a slytherin <laughs> oh <laughs> okay <laughs> the, yeah the Voldemort capricorn energy <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, right. who wants to go? I'll go first. I think I'm going to marry Enneagram, kiss Hogwarts house, and I'm going to have the cliff astrology because I'm too attached to the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I think oh. I would, I think I would marry my Hogwarts house because I just love my Hogwarts house. That was like the first thing I really identified with. I know. Same. <laughs> um, so I think I would marry my Hogwarts house. I think I would kiss astrology because obviously that's something I'm very passionate about. Um, and I think I would cliff Enneagram. I don't feel as connected to that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. hmm. I think I'm going to marry, I think I'm going to marry astrology because I do nice. feel connected with that. I'm going to kiss Enneagram and I'm going to Cliff Hogwarts house. Ooh. Yeah, you have Slytherin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Slytherin's Nothing cool. Nothing against Slytherin. <laughs> it just feels like the least, like, it has really bad marketing. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I don't mind. Like, I love, I love Draco and so yeah. I kind of like being a Slytherin. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, that was our show today. Thank you for joining us, Chrissy. That was so fun. Mm. Um, it, we want to know if you're, if you're open to people finding you on the internet, where can people find you on the, on the internet? Um, so my Instagram is Sarai Strange. Um, and my TikTok is who could leave. Oh my God. Can I just tell you that I thought it was Sarah is strange. (laughs) Everyone (laughs) thinks that. So it's Sarai from the um, Strange the Dreamer duology by Lady Taylor. So Sarai and then strange. I know. (laughs) Okay. So it's spelled Mm S-A-R-A-I and then strange. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Is who could leave a Taylor Swift reference? Yes. The Archer is my favorite song. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's so good. All right, y'all. Well, that is our show today. We release episodes every Friday, so make sure you are following us for free on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube if you like to watch the show, youtube.com slash at those working fangirls. Our socials are done by Chloe Laverson. She's amazing, so make sure you're following us on Instagram at those forking fangirls or on TikTok at those forking fangirls. And our show is edited by Alex Polis, Natasha Polis, Christine Riccio, and Ricky McBrayer. We are off to go record 
Fangirl Tea Time. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. And we'll see you next time. I'm Christine. I'm Natasha. And I'm Christy. (laughs) Bye, everybody. (laughs) Bye. Bye.